Welcome everyone to another episode of the Medfield College Film Society. Ah, we're in the country western part of our season. We had a wonderful time with Robin Hood, a, uh, a western British, uh, you know, combo mix-up, if you will. And we're uh, in for some more good old western Fort Wilderness Frontierland cinema here. Right in the middle of the 70s. But before we get to that, let me introduce our society members, starting with my brother Michael Crawford, living very close to Fort Wilderness, a place that uh, celebrates the IP of uh, Doc Terminus. How are you tonight? How can I be bad when I'm close to Fort Wilderness and oh, good old Doc Terminus? That's right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I just go out there and... Uh, you know, have to stop a couple of times on the way for, you know, little, little breaks, but, uh, you know, when nature calls, but it's nice and cool. It's, it's <laughs> nice. It's nice. It's nice and cool. I'm great. I'm excited good. to talk about this. Well, up in the mountains, a, a place that's still rugged by its inherent nature, uh, you know, fussing over a nice bowl of son of a gun stew, Mr. Andy Brown. How's it going, Andy? Yeah, boys. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good to be here. Good to be. Uh, I like the Western genre. Uh, I know. So this uh, this feels good to be in this kind of neck of the woods. Um, I'm feeling it tonight. I agree. I love the Western genre. I love the seventies. That's just a recipe for making me happy. It's like comfort. It's like, it's like son of a gun stew, except it mm. goes down a little mm -hmm. easier. Okay. Well, you know, you got to have a bank to rob and we got to go to the banking capital. Probably the home of the first gold rush. It is Charlotte, North Carolina, or right outside of it. Mr. Robert McSwain, get out of the safe and how you do. Sorry, I had to go. I'm, I'm back now. <laughs> I could tell if that was gold coins or what it was. No privacy at all around this place. <laughs> I gotta go. Um, yeah, we'll get there, but, uh, I mean, if anybody knows, they know. You could read it in the title, but Michael, what are we watching tonight? We were watching the 1975 Disney classic, The Apple Dumpling Gang. The Apple Dumpling Gang, as pointed out <laughs> uh, prior to our recording. <laughs> By all rights, should have been Apple Dumpling. I mean, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But no Dumpling. Uh, this was written by Don Tate, produced by Bill Anderson, directed by Norman Tokar, all people we've seen yes. previously. It's just like running in circles now. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's the usual uh, suspects here. Got music by Buddy Baker, some mm. real slamming music mm -hmm. in this one uh, from Mr. Baker, and uh, starring Bill Bixby, Susan Clark, Don Knotts, Tim Conway, and a raft of character actors, David Wayne, Slim Pickens, Harry Morgan, John MacGyver, and so many more. You know, I was surprised that Susan Clark was a woman because I was about to buy her a drink. I know. <laughs> she. That would have been a big her on the mistake. Back and buy her a drink, you know. You just forget. She's, you know, it was, as soon as I saw her, though, I goes, ah, "That's the mom from Webster." Yeah. That's yes. Right. Yep. Yes. 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 Well, you know. This movie is kind of a uh, an icon of a of a time at the Disney Studios, Michael. It yeah, feels it really like is. it is kind of the keystone of a lot of other cinema we've watched. See Gus, see Boat Nicks, see what have you. But um, Shaggy Da, mm -hmm. this kind of set the template for a lot of. Well, a lot of uh, the Don Knotts, Tim Conway stuff really sets a template for a lot of where they went in the years after, for sure. Yep. And the we've seen the spinoffs, but this is kind of the uh, the yeah the the leading charge. This would uh, spawn its own sequel. Yeah, <laughs> believe it or not, it's, which uh, I have not seen in a long time, but remember as being really just 
You would think. Rough. Let's get it more about hmm. Amos and Theodore anyway. Yes. A lot to discuss. Yeah, let's, yeah. Dispense with all the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, with all the, uh, you know, relatable things and just go full Amos and Theodore. I remember nothing about the sequel. I'm, just, I'm sitting here trying to remember what it was about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's... I had to put Amos it into Theodore the... Uh, on there. It Hopper. has... Um, it has... Um, what's his name from uh, from Animal House in it? Uh, Otter? Was, yeah. He was oh, in that's that's right. right. I remember yeah. Otter being in it now. Okay. So, I mean, it would have been great if they would have like, gone to New York or or Shanghai or something. That's what they're Oh, about. yeah. New York would have been, been really funny. Yeah. Shang, <laughs> Shanghai would have been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they were flirting with that uh, already, but we'll get there. Uh, I Yeah, Michael and I watched this a lot. This is part of the VHS collection. And I, yeah, I mean, we, uh, the beginning of this, is very crystallized in our memories. Oh, so much, so much. And I hadn't seen this in a good long time, I but seen it's time just either. like falling off a log. Every, every little bit of it is just burned right in. Yeah. No matter how long it's been. Another so, one of those. What about you, Robert? Now, there used to be a, um, a rental store over by the Cleveland County mall. Or if you remember that. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Which one was the by the, there. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, um, that's right. Uh, we yeah. would rent from there, and I re- distinctly recall getting this movie in the big white, you know, clamshell case um, from there because we they had this whole wall of Disney films. We would just go work through those a lot, and um, and that's that's that was my my first memory of it. And then of course the opening sequence is burned into my conscious. I didn't uh, have it at home. Um, we may have recorded it off of the Disney Channel at some point later on, as I do remember seeing it again, and I wouldn't have had any access to it, I don't think, other other than that, maybe maybe through you. Um, maybe that's where I saw it again. But anyway, um, I had forgotten a lot about it. My kids watched it recently, like I guess in the last year or so, and I caught the first 10 or 15 minutes of it. But uh, there were so many beats I could... I, I mean, I'll get into it later, but there were so many moments where, like, where my memory would like come right back to me, like so fast. Yeah. And then it would just like I don't remember anything after this. So I'll talk more about why I, th- I have a theory why that happened. <laughs> and, um, hey man, you want to come over and watch Apple Dumpling Gang? <laughs> Play some Nintendo. <laughs> did you uh, did you air it at any of your birthday parties, uh, Michael? It seems like that might be one uh, that you would want to you know bring out, roll out from no, the crowd. No, no, never did. We had it off a of TV too. It off yeah. of probably an, an uh, one of those Eisner Eisner nights. Um, Hello. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, ours ours came off of off of TV as well. Uh, so we had it concert review, but no birthday parties though. Before we throw it to Andy, did that video store have that? Um, you know, kind of old barrel with the goldfish yeah, the in it. In it. So I, yeah. I was going to bring that up. I believe it did. Yeah. It's it had very... the, the really bad wood paneling. I remember that. It was kind yeah. of. And then Chugga Chugga Choo Choo, the hobby store moved yes. in there later. Yeah. Which was amazing. <laughs> it's a I great love Chugga Chugga Choo Choo. <laughs> it's so good. And all I remember, you know, the, the, the video store that lives in legend in Shelby was, was, what was it? Premier video that had the Freddy Krueger stand up at the end of the aisle. Yeah, that's some scary true. Stuff. True moments. Was that the one up, up, uptown? Like, no, no, that was that was up the Curtis. Hill there on Curtis 74. Mathis was uptown. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Pick Andy, you did not <laughs> grow up in yeah, Shelby, that, no. and that gets thrown in your face constantly. But did you ever watch the Apple Dumpling King? <laughs> I did not. This was my first time seeing it. Uh, it was one of those movies that I was aware of. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember as a kid seeing like, uh, probably seeing like, you know, you know, when you, you flip the channels and it would show like the name of whatever's playing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I remember seeing apple dumpling gang and then it would be like Don Knotts and Tim Conway on the screen at the time. And, uh, and at the, when I was like, I mean, I've loved those two actors since I was a little kid. So I, I remember seeing that and be like, Oh, this has got to be good. This is a Western. There's Don Knotts, Tim Conway. And uh, and even as a kid, I turned it off. I said, um, <laughs> mm, "This there's 
this isn't what I was hoping it to be. And you know what? Uh, I still feel the same way. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't understand why they keep putting Don Knotts and Tim Conway on the poster and making it all about them. And they're barely in the movie. And they're, what parts they're in, they're not very good. So. Were you shocked that you didn't like this movie, Andy? I wasn't shocked at all. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah. All and, right. But there is some bright moments. I will say that. Uh, and um, to, um, we'll just, I'll wait. But yeah. All right. Well, let's get into it. I think we've teased it enough. It's time to head out west into the world of the Apple Dumpling Game. Well, they saddled up in Boston, still wet behind the ears, and they made their way across the wild frontier. As they sought their fame and fortune, their legend up and sprang, and they soon became the Apple Dumpling Gang. And they called them the Apple Dumpling Gang. Wayne of Vista Pictures is back, and boy, we get some a couple of tasty strums on electric guitar. Oh, I was already right. mm-hmm. bro. Come on, come on that's now. what they need instead of that. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah, that guitar. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. I was like, come on now. This is immediately followed by a mournful harmonica as we see a lone horseman trotting away on a delightful prairie scene. And we have an elite credit font that announces the Apple Dumpling Gang, complete with the apple and a cowboy hat. <laughs> totally. I mean, it's... Very pensive beginning credit. Very, very moody. Uh, Michael, I'm assuming this all is Golden Oak uh, stuff. It's... I don't think so. And in oh, fact, really? in the credits, it said some was filmed, and I can't remember where. Uh, if it was some national park or some oh some area. we got a location shoot boys got a lo- well that was my first note was like wow filmed on location because that mm-hmm. first shot uh, was not golden oak but it's right. funny because there were three shots there's the first shot where he's like on location somewhere and you know uh, uh in the west and there's a second shot, which is a mat shot of him going mm-hmm. into town. And then the third shot is the back lot of him right. in town. So you get all three. It's a little something we call movie magic, boys. This goes to show you anything can happen in the movies. It's true. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to bring this up because I, it's so it fits so perfectly. But Robert and I have been playing a lot of Red Dead <laughs> online. Yes. <laughs> a lot of, we have gotten into this game suddenly. I know it came out like three or four years ago. <laughs> But uh, just some strong Red Dead vibes as soon as this movie started. I think you all should uh, take on Apple Dumpling Gang cosplay or personas or whatever. (laughs) That would be amazing. (laughs) That's what we're going to change our whole persona now. Donovan. Dumpling Gang. (laughs) Yeah, it would would at least make our our current gang way more wholesome. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, we're... It, it was just timely that you know we this movie is what we were watching and he and I've been playing it, staying up way too late playing it. <laughs> I've been That's debating right. whether or not to even bring it up because I was kind of like, oh, oh. And then, yeah, and he just jumped right in there, right out of the gate. Oh, the gate, yeah. man! I couldn't hold my tongue any longer. <laughs> but I have in my notes like right, like the third note here is like, man, this has got Red Dead Redemption vibes. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was my second note. <laughs> well, the sun is set as this horseman. This lone horseman heads into a quiet western town, and we see him being spied in the trees by two ne'er-do-wells. The aforementioned Tim Conway and Dodd Knotts is Amos and Theodore. Amos says to Theodore, what do you think, Theodore? To which he replies, he looks like a real live one. You know, it was interesting, the musical cue that, that played right when they show him. It makes him sound like... It's like they're like way more dangerous. Yes, they're mm-hmm. more, more bad than they really bait are. Bait and switch, right? Yeah. The two mask up and arm themselves and go to stick him up, but Theodore's gun drops. And while Amos tries to throw a rope, it goes unnoticed by the horseman, which I thought was a pretty good gag. It's as far as the horseman just clopping along yeah. in no change. We cut to a poker game officiated by none other than my favorite, Harry Morgan. I mean, this guy is the best. So excited. He is in everything, and that's fine with me. 
What a run he probably had. I wonder what else. I mean, <laughs> he, had he was everywhere run. in 1975, probably. He was everywhere. Uh, he's telling the horseman, whose name is Donovan, about Quake City's golden days when the gold was flowing, but Quake City was built on a fault, and it hasn't worked out so well since then. I mean, this has got theme park IP written all over it, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Just put it right beside Thunder Mountain, Quake City, uh, whatever. Well, we'll get to, we know the establishment's name. But Donovan is talking about how he wants to open up his own establishment with fine carpets and is on his way to New Orleans. Always the carpets with Donovan. Big carpet fan. <laughs> really? It, it took me a moment. Uh, I didn't realize it was Bill Bixby when it started. Yes. I missed I was like, hey, it's the Hulk. Yeah. Bill Bixby. And man, he's a cool dude in this one. He, he is a cool like, dude. Black in this outfit. One. That's right. Well, a rather sweaty man enters the saloon to which. Harry Morgan, who his name is Homer, says, If you want a haircut, my barber shop is closed. If you want to sue someone, my court's open every second Tuesday. If you want the sheriff, I'm playing poker. Which is a motif that would <laughs> go on throughout the movie. Yeah. He's the man about town. Sweaty Man says he's headed to San Francisco, but needs someone to pick up some valuables coming in on tomorrow's stage. The horseman... Donovan recognizes the sweaty man who also recognizes him. He hasn't seen him since Santa Fe when the sweaty man tried to sell him the marshal's horse. He says, I was just funnin', Donovan. Says he can make it up to him. And I thought of Michael when he said, I was just funnin'. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like because I'm a sweaty with... man. <laughs> this guy is so like grungy looking. He is. Man, he is he rough. Is. So he's expecting some valuables on tomorrow's stage, and if Donovan will claim them, he'll make it worth his while and pay for the marshal's horse. He throws five dollars in Donovan's face as a deposit, and Donovan says he's in. And so we cut to what is perhaps the best title sequence in film history, <laughs> as we see a stagecoach en route. The music is frantic and lively, and we eventually see two boys and a little girl leaning out of the stagecoach. The woman driving the stage says, Again? And the girl nods. She stops the stage, and the girl runs off behind a tree and does some stuff and comes back. <laughs> Michael, your impressions on this uh, repeating gag? Well, I was going to ask if this triggered anything for, because as the only non-parent here, uh, for the, for the other members, uh, if this t triggered any, I have oh, never man. had a child that, uh, requires constant that, but, uh, Robert, you, you got some, we went to a soccer game once <laughs> and out on the prairie, both, both the kids, like the big, the big Gatorades. Oh Yeah. And I was yeah. flying solo that day, and I had to drive up to Asheville and, uh, after the game was over. And we were stopping every third exit. I kid you not. It was, I mean, we were stopping. I, I was getting so irritated. I was like, get it all out. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, both of them. I got to go again. Like, we just stopped. <laughs> Anyway, I got one yeah. for you. Um, I gotta go. Uh, this is uh, geographically relevant to to all of us. Uh, during the height of COVID, we decamped to our mountain re uh, retreat, as some of you may remember from those days. Uh, but to get there, you would have to pay at the pump, and we would stop at rest areas to use the bathroom. And we had it all scripted out, and we'd do drive through. So you could go in the the rest area and kind of not touch anything. And so we get up to Asheville, North Carolina, and our son's like, I gotta go. And it was one of those similar situations Robert's discussing. And so we just stopped at the Canton overpass, uh, on the, on the, uh, exit ramp and just <laughs> said, stand up, overpass, stand up and pee out the door. <laughs> and we did that. And we just kept going. Nice. <laughs> I've done, we've done that. Yeah. Yep. Know, going the opposite direction, coming from west to east, heading to the coast. <laughs> and um, yeah, just pulled off the side of the road. And he's like, I got to go, got to go, got to go. It's like, all right. We don't even have time to get to off the exit to do anything. Right? Otherwise, and just, just pull over and just let it rip. Stand and deliver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 
it's it's a real thing, but the, maybe not to this degree. But boy, we have a theme song, boys. Oh man, right. Uh, as Michael Please said, have you we covered have, this song before. Jeff? I have not. I have not. Uh, uh, as Michael said, the music's by Buddy Baker, but this song was written by Shane Tatum. And sung by Randy Sparks and the Back Porch Majority. <laughs> Back <laughs> Which Porch is, Majority. What a name, man. Ooh. What a name. The Back Porch Majority. And I, Randy Sparks, founder of the new Christy Minstrels, and like the Back Porch Majority was supposed to be like the JV team of the new Christy Minstrels. But oh, they no way. Uh, became stars in their own right. And this is, uh, yeah. They I were, didn't know that. Had it going on. It's a good song. This is a nice little rollicking number. We got another P stop coming up. Beautiful vistas abound as the little girl empties her <laughs> fluids all over the prairie. <laughs> Stay. Uh, what is she drinking? I know. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> what is she drinking? Coffee. Coffee. She's going to get a thermos <laughs> in the, <laughs> the stage Coffee. there. Gotta go. <laughs> I said, uh, there's, you know. This is going to be a good movie from the character names in the credits. Mm hmm. Because we get one slide where it's because they love, like Disney movies of this era love telling you the characters' names uh, in the credits. So in one, Robin Hood. one slide, we had Rube Cluck, Rowdy <laughs> Joe Dover, Oso and Noso, and Slippery Sid. People who would never be referred to in the movie, but. No, yeah, none, of, none of whom Sid. are mentioned at all, slippery but Sid. they all have names. Again, Slippery Sli- Sid could be a great theme park IP. He could have like mm-hmm. little, like a, uh, maybe like a Coke stand. In Frontierland. Slippery yeah. Sid. He, he could be the one that, uh, he could have him at the pool and he's like, hey, don't, don't run, <laughs> walk. <laughs> Slippery Sid, Sid. Sid. like River Country. He could I was going to say River Country. Him. He should have been over at River Country. Yeah, that's, that's, true. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. Well, the stage finally arrives in town as Donovan looks on. The woman driving the stage is telling everyone what's up in town, says you can grab some food at the hotel or the Hard Times Cafe. <laughs> Another establishment yes. which should be a real place. Yes. Donovan that'd comes a, up. That'd, that'd be a hilariously a Hard Times Cafe <laughs> in Disney World. Yes. <laughs> oh, that would be so good. Uh, get the your back porch s- majority playing. Special Denver. themed dessert at the Hard Times Cafe. Yeah. Uh, Donovan comes up and asks where these valuables are, and sure enough, it's the two boys and the girl. Who could have guessed? And boy, they look a sight. Uh, I'm going to throw it again to Michael. You know, do you want to discuss the casting merits of child actors in the 1970s? And well, it's matchups? full, it's full scamp all the way down on this one. But these kids are not. I don't know. They're kind of different. I feel like <laughs> it's not like uh, yeah, Elliot. No, 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 no. And they're not like hobo children. Like, like I mean, I guess they become hobo children, but <laughs> <laughs> they aren't the same. Um, like, uh, like Celia's pretty cute. And, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're kind of a different, a different cut. The middle one's kind of, of the mold of the era. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, with his, he's kind of like the, the Daniels kid and the shaggy DA. In yeah. another era, he'd oh, have man, a transistor radio. It was the la- it's it's the last movie that Celia did. That actress, she only did this movie, and that was it. Oh, like, really? Don't, mm-hmm. No need to do any more, man. She dominated. She was she was the better of the three. She yeah. didn't get the callback for Savannah Smiles or whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, Donovan tries to Welsh on taking the kids, but Homer is there and he's holding them to it. Donovan asks the woman, whose name is Dusty. To speak to someone in charge, and she calls her pie out, who is Colonel T.R. Clydesdale. And this guy, boy, he's got kind of the Colonel Sanders, along with a Buffalo Bill look. He's got the white suit, <laughs> bow tie, mustache and goatee, and a monocle. Mm-hmm. I, and he is uh, utilized a lot for reasons I'm not quite sure of. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, never understood either. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I there. missed something. I thought I was like, oh, I did too. Did yeah, this is a scene where they explain why this guy's important. He's the man, you know, it's it's like a, the man thing. That He's the colonel. To your colonel. But this is David Wayne, who was like, an, uh, which I had never realized it was him before. Um, 
and I, I just noticed him in the credits. I'm like, well, who is he? But then I, re- I realized that was him. And like, he was in a ton of stuff, even like he was in uh, like Adam's rib with Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn. And oh, wow. He was like in a ton of movies in the forties and fifties. Uh, and like often kind of a second banana kind of guy, but hmm. uh, yeah, he's in like heavy disguise heavy disguise here he was the original digger barnes on um dallas as well oh wow okay so uh but yeah he's it's he's in heavy disguise and just doing a bit and it's really weird he was also the mad hatter on the original the uh, batman series from the 60s oh that's right that's right yeah he's one of those guys well donovan explains there's some kind of misunderstanding Dusty says, this saddle blanket tin horn agreed to pick up these kids, and now he's trying to weasel his way out of it. And we find out the woman's name is Magnolia, which makes Donovan exclaim, Magnolia! There's a lot of great Bill Bixby <laughs> exclamations in this movie. Yes. Magnolia! Yes. Um, I don't understand why that's such a big deal. Uh, except, except that Dusty is like wearing pants and like button down shirt and a hat and they make so much hay about her being like a dude it's it's, it's the old west man it's, it's the calamity jane kind of her thing. name oh, is magnolia oh. i don't get it anyway as tr clydesdale is trying to figure out the situation homer says he's gonna hold him to it again and meanwhile celia is trying to pee mister i gotta go <laughs> Maybe she has like a medical situation. I don't know. Homer says Wendell had a shack on the edge of town and they all agree the girl's emergency is more urgent. So they're on their way. Magnolia makes Donovan sign for them as T.R. Clydesdale makes a speech about the butterfly stage company and how they will make an agreement that suits all parties. It's like a doddering old man with power, I guess, is the thing. And he's out of touch. And he also has a drinking problem, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's got a great name, though. That T.R. Clydesdale. Yeah, it is. The oh, Colonel. It's strong. Yeah, just kind of kind of uh, full of himself. Mm. And, you know, the man in charge who is not actually in charge. Cut to Donovan reading a letter about how the father of the children had no money left in his estate, but he was sure the proceeds of the Commodore mine would more than cover the expense of the children. Homer says Wendell probably read that and got out of town. Donovan asks Homer if the children are considered boards of the town. Homer says they have no facilities to take on children on the town level. I like they're getting into municipal government mm-hmm. here. Like Sim City, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you jest, but this was like, I was getting kind of like, okay, let's move on, guys. Uh, I have one of many times. Homer says, we have certain rules to live by. You don't jump another man's claim. You don't steal his wife, woman, or whiskey. You don't strike a bargain and then entertain second thoughts. Any one of these offenses can make you the exalted guest of honor at a hemp party. These lines are these. There are so incredible. many lines in this that are just stuck in my brain forever because they're such crazy turns of phrases. Like even as a kid, when you didn't exactly know what it meant, but it still is so memorable. Exalted guest of honor at a hemp party. Hemp party. Yep. That's good. Good stuff. Those are some good lessons. I mean, good. Oh yeah, the rules to mm-hmm. live by. I'm, print them out and put them on a wall. Yeah. <laughs> Next year, uh, what's the uh, Ron Swanson Pyramid of mm-hmm. Greatness? Yeah. <laughs> pyramid of Greatness. Yes. <laughs> with that, Homer's off to the barber shop. Donovan's alone with the kids, who all have giant luggage tags on them, which I thought was funny. That's weird. <laughs> but this scene really sticks out in my mind uh, in the memory <sighs> banks. Uh, yes. The rent, the rent kid says, "What are we gonna eat?" Donovan touches him on the head, and the kid kicks him in the shin. The oldest kid says, "Clovis don't like to be touched." As the young girl scrunches her nose and smiles at Donovan, and there's, you know, your your three kids right there in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. Later, we have a thunderstorm, and the boys are catching rain dripping from the roof. As the young girl is afraid of the thunder, 
Donovan is busy trying to clean the kitchen. And damn Clovis is knocking stuff down. Stop it! Capture Clovis? Dag Playing Dag with Clovis. the rocks. <laughs> Shell with <Clovis>. rocks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he kicks... <laughs> he found an ore sample, which is thought to be worthless. Donovan's trying to cook some salt pork, and the kids are being a handful... Uh, this the all made me is f- what I remember <laughs> yeah, so vividly. It, it has been a chaotic week in my life, but watching Donovan cook the salt pork with the three kids made me feel better about my uh, <laughs> life. We've all been there, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was drawing some uh, on this. Uh, I, just, I, 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 I felt Donovan here. Yeah. The girl needs to be picked up and moved out of the rain, and Donovan turns around, and the salt pork has gone from raw to immediately on fire somehow. <laughs> That's kind of <laughs> impressive. He looks up at the rafters and says, what have, I done to des- what have I done to deserve this? To which one of the kids responds, who are you talking to? And Donovan <laughs> says, it doesn't matter. I don't think he's listening to me anyway. Which brings to mind, I mean, like, are all of Bill Bixby's uh, lines dubbed? It seems like almost that, all it really of them like it. What have I done to deserve this? Maybe he's just really close to the boom mic. Or he had it like a really good lavalier. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it sounds so many sound dubbed. Just then Magnolia comes in and says she has some extra son of a gun stick. <laughs> Son of a gun. That's like the, the missing. I mean, guns? they need to have that at Pecos Bills. I mean, what are yes, they doing? They do. That'd be great. Yeah, I don't know. I just thought I didn't know if anyone had looked up the recipe. I, I was going to look up Son of a Gun to see if that's a real thing. It was either throw it out or bring it up. Later, the kids are in bed and Donovan's smoking a stogie. He says, <laughs> Dusty has a way with children. Now she calmed them down and starts trying to pawn them off to her. She says, you trying to dump those kids on me or are you working on something else? Which begins a litany of innuendo in this movie. Yeah. Quite a bit. Totally. That was a a funny line. There's so many good lines, I think. I I feel like we say this all the time. It's like we kind of talk to the plot department. Like, what's going on with the, the editing the editing things drag out sometimes yeah. guys it's come like on. all the ornamentation is there because there are good lines but it's like the underlying structure is uh yeah i do have just one of the most random thoughts i had watching this movie was bill bixby whenever he's got his hat off and kind of got his hair going because he's got a kind of a kind of a quaff and he's sitting there smoking the cigar i thought he would have made a good wolverine because mm. <laughs> there's True. one scene where he's walking down the street and he's got his hair his hair's kind of like up at the edges i'm like yeah he'd, he'd have been a good wolverine it's he was very old, true but uh he could have been wolverine i'm gonna say this bill bixby is what kept me in this movie oh i mean oh he is totally so yeah. strong he was what about like, what about harry morgan man oh harry was great too don't get me wrong harry and slim pickens <sighs> oh gosh uh, slim pickens. and bill bixby but Bill Bixby, I mean, it's just such a sad thing that he died so young. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He, was, he really was a good actor. He mm-hmm. was. Very warm. I mean, he um, he has a, um, uh, who's our guy? Uh, the whoa guy. Uh, oh, Fred McMurray? I thought you didn't like No, no, him. no, not Fred McMurray. The other one, though. The, the one <laughs> oh, Dean Jones. Dean yeah, Jones. yeah. Dean Jones. He has a bit of Dean Jones mm-hmm. kind of quality to him. McMurray. You got to wonder if he would have been uh, involved in other projects. Yeah. Well, Dusty leaves. Donovan stews for a while before the rain drops on the little girl's face and wakes her up. She gets out of bed and comes and snuggles Donovan as he smokes his stogie. And she indicates she doesn't like the smell of the stogie with her fingers. And he puts it away. As <laughs> that it little gesture. Out. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the Wawa. Right when she yeah. Oh, gosh. Like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> The next day, we see Donovan trying to pawn off kids some more. He, he starts with a man and his so-called attractive wife. He womp womp. As the young girl gets into the chicken coop, Celia. And the wife says, get out of the way! And kicks him out. We jump to another frightening couple being sold to kids <laughs> by Donovan. And the scruffy man he's selling to touch... Uh, they're selling to touches Clovis, which of course garners a kick in the shin. And out goes that idea. 
Next, we see them climbing a falling staircase to another house where a man answers the door without any words, and a woman comes out, an, an, an older lady, in a pink silk robe with feathers, and drops a bottle of liquor into the, to a that barrel. That laugh. Really and, says, and says, kids, yick, and closes the door on them. That was amazing. <laughs> It's a, it's a unsettling that it's him trying to pawn the kids off. I mean, it is, it is, and he's like the the second one most unsettling because he's yes. like they could do good work for you. Yeah, the, she can. The little girl will be good at cleaning your clothes <laughs> and all this stuff. It's uh. Well, undeterred, Donovan is on the way to the next destination. When walking through the streets, they see a flaming stagecoach with the fire brigade <laughs> chasing after it. Very random. Donovan has to rescue Celia from gawking. Homer looks on and is gloating at Donovan, and as the kids say they're hungry, he offers the Hard Times Cafe again, and Donovan is not feeling this. There's good food over at the Hard Times Cafe. I'm going to start saying that if if my kids say they're hungry. (laughs) (laughs) Well, later, Donovan finds a poker game. He tells the kids to stay out of trouble. He heads into the saloon, saying he has a few sheep to fleece. The kids roam the street and see a band organ being prepped, or a melodeon as it's called, on the street to be loaded into another establishment coming soon. Clovis hits the lever and away it goes as the townsfolk look on. The man who's selling it is very agitated and chews them away. It's a very uh, Wayne's World 2 uh, moment here of like, <laughs> we've got to be very careful with all these things. Let's keep it out in the street because we're being very careful about all of this. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Yes. <laughs> the kids stroll into Chinatown as a fuzz guitar plays for some reason. <laughs> Why the fuzz guitar? I, <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, the Californians and their Asian racism never, never cease to amaze me in these films. I know. Man yells at them in a brash tone, and the kids move on. They spot a mine at the top of the hill, and of course, what are you going to do? Climb the mountain and find out more. Meanwhile, Donovan's throwing down some major cash in this poker game, and he's cleaning up. We see Theodore and Amos in the bar with their eyes on Donovan. Theodore bets he has about 500 on him. That's about 200 apiece. Let's not (laughs) jump him in broad daylight, they say. They begin to head out. Amos steps on the spittoon, blowing their cover completely by making it a scene. And a scene it is, because it goes on too long. Mm -hmm. Boy, does it. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's just, why do they stick with this so long? And boy, we're not even close to how long it can be. We'll find out. The kids are up at the abandoned mine looking around like you do. They discover it's not the Commodore mine. They are mine at all. It's the Moon Ridge number two. Kids get in a mine cart. Look at this. It's a train. Uh. <laughs> of course, it begins moving and they go off the track, like off the end of the track and down the hill. And we have some great blue screening here. Nice. <laughs> they rock back me. and forth more, kids. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me of uh, Mac and me. The scene that uh, Paul Rudd always shows Conan when they Yes. Like Here's yes. The clip. yes. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> us like that. Well, they first strike Chinatown, knocking over the water tower, and head into town. Of course, breaking a mirror that they're holding in the middle of the street, and then going straight into the band organ in the new establishment. Well, as Donovan leaves the saloon with tons of cash, gloating about taking the suckers in Quake City, a crew comes up and takes all his money away. We see a horseshoe pin with gems, like a pendant, I guess. Uh, it's like a little brooch at donovan's place he says it's a cherished token of a lady's affection which i loved it's like very uh, uh big lebowski how they yes. get, keep calling it that <laughs> that's my special lady friend the cherished token of a lady's uh-huh. affection man that's another line that stuck in my head <laughs> yeah cherished token of a lady's affection he says it's gonna turn it he's gonna turn it into cash kids say check out mine and dollar check out the mine which Donovan says is worthless. As he heads out, Celia says she's got to go or she's going to ha- have an accident. Going to have an accident. As he goes back, she says, I like you, Mr. Donovan. 
All it takes is taking your kid to the bathroom. They'll just glom right on to anybody. <laughs> Kids are so dumb. <laughs> That's how they imprint. Whoever takes them to the bathroom. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the street, Amos and Theodore are out on the prowl and arguing about how to take down Donovan. Theodore says they have no lead to throw and no powder to throw it with. He says the best way to catch him is to drop a bucket on his head. And he will cue Amos by hooting at him. And Amos is talking about how he's going to hoot back. And they're off to drop the, drop the bucket. Oh, guys. The Amos and Theodore stuff, please. It's like, just... I know the, de- the deal is, like, they're both dumb, whatever. And that one is dumber than the other. But how would anybody be around Amos for 10 minutes and not murder him? I mean, how is he not dead already in the Old West? Mm. That's true. Good question. Because, I mean, we get the background that they were with a, a real gang before yeah. of serious people. And how did those guys not kill him? It's a good question. And and why is Theodore still sticking with him? Uh, also right. a good question. I mean, I understand they say, you know, what Amos does, but why does Theodore stick with him? Because, yeah, that didn't make sense. Donovan shows up, Theodore hoots, of course, Amos isn't paying attention, falls down the roof because he sneezes, which is something that happens. He's intent on calling back instead of climbing up the roof. I mean, this stuff isn't worth explaining. He keeps hooting when Donovan goes around the corner, making Donovan Donovan pull his gun, which Theodore waves and keeps hooting, forcing Donovan to double take, which I did think was pretty funny. I did enjoy Donovan's reactions to all this nonsense. You're right, he would be a good Wolverine. Yes! <laughs> uh, Amos drops the bucket on Theodore, of course. Who could have predicted that? And the nice little Derringer that uh, Donovan pulls yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, he's got the little, like, gambler gambler version Derringer and is tucked yeah. away. Always so classy. Yeah. Meanwhile, Dusty is on the town pining for a brass bed. Lord, she's got some feelings. <laughs> Donovan comes up and they begin talking when they hear Amos falling down, which was a nice bit of foley. Women be having feelings. Yeah. <laughs> Donovan says he thinks two men tried to waylay him. She said it's probably just Amos and Theodore. They used to ride with the Stillwell gang till Amos shot Stillwell in the leg. Now they go by the hash knife outfit, but they're mostly <laughs> harmless now. I like the hash knife outfit. I do love hash knife outfit. Well, Donovan offers to buy Dusty a drink, and she is offended. That is not something you do, I guess. She apologizes and said he didn't think of her as a... Well, he apologized, rather. Says he didn't think of her as a uh, lady, because she had pants on. I don't get it, but... But I put it to you that she has been in a saloon or two in her lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. What's wrong with offering her a drink? (laughs) I don't understand. Anyway. The daughter of a colonel. I mean, come on. I mean... Who's an alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's why. On that dubious note, we end (laughs) Act 1. Hey, buy a drink? I'm sorry, I uh, I just wasn't thinking of you as a... I'm sorry. Not not so loud, and just a little little bit slower. Where are you going? Oh, mercy. All right. So the next morning, Donovan emerges from the saloon a little worse for wear. And the kids immediately show up, saying they're on the way to their mine to find some gold so they don't have to eat biscuits and greens all the time. (laughs) So I was like, okay, that's fair enough. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? What is what? What's wrong with that? (laughs) God, No. (laughs) <laughs> what's wrong with that triggering uh, donovan says uh, again there, there's no gold in that mine but the kids insist that their dad said it was there so they're gonna go check it out so he's like whatever so the sheriff and, and uh, the the banker guy emerge from the saloon and we see that the banker has won 
Donovan's cherished token of a lady's affection. <laughs> just want, I just uh, want to throw out real quick. The banker, is, his character's name is Leonard Sharp, but the actor's name is John. It looks like it's spelled Mick Giver, but mm-hmm. I, like, I like to think it's McGyver, and I just wanted to point that out. John <laughs> McGyver. He's a that guy. I mean, sure, he was on the Andy Griffin show. No, he's actually, he wasn't. Been. Really? Yeah. I'm shocked, because he's like I everything. Too, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Donovan heads off to sleep it off, and the kids take off for the mine. So we find ourselves at Amos and Theodore's campsite, where Amos is freaking out. He shows up on his mule, saying there's a posse after him. They grab their rifles and, like, you know, take formation, standing on guard, and, like, uh, you know, sniper positions. Amos says there are five, six, maybe 20, all loaded for bear. Saw him in the bushes down below. And so they're talking about whether they're going to go out in a blaze of glory or not. And then they reflect on all they've been through together. And, you know, how, how, what good friends they are. But so they're going to go out <laughs> guns a blazing. Uh, the moment is interrupted when it's revealed that the kids have just walked up behind them while they're looking for a mine. And that's who he saw as the posse. They, they got their shovels and stuff. And so he thought those were rifles, but. This was the posse Amos was worried about. Theodore is humiliated, of course, and starts dragging Amos for being an idiot. Takes back all the nice things he said about all their their days together out west. I don't blame you know, him. It, I, it would have made sense if they'd have made them brothers, and that's why. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yes, hey. I always promised Ma I'd keep an eye on you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, that would be much better. You're right. Got it all well, figured out. <laughs> <laughs> we travel to the mine the kids are scared by all the creepy foley and darkness and so they start looking around and eventually start digging just kind of in the middle of the room yeah you know so, when i go to a mine i, I take my uh, shovel that's it that's all you need yeah it's, yeah it's a little shovel start digging into rock just start digging <laughs> And I love that it, he starts digging, and one of the kids immediately is like, "Did you find any yet?" That's that's the way it would go down in yeah. real life. Also, yeah. you couldn't pay me any amount of gold to go into an abandoned mine that wasn't like a, a promise to be safe. No, I don't think all. I'd go into a mine that was safe. I don't think I would either, Robert. Yeah. Thank you. I feel. I've seen so- I've seen enough episodes of Lassie not to do anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> that and old mills. I stay away from them, too. Yeah, you mm-hmm. can never trust an old mill. Yeah, and this is a rickety-looking mine, too. This is not a mine that... I well, mean, these kids yeah. are very brave or very stupid, or both. I don't know. But not, not one to go just kind of running around in. Uh, and to that point, a tremor comes along, which turns into a full-blown earthquake. It is Quake City. It is Quake City. Uh, the ceiling starts to cave in and you know they're dodging falling timbers and rocks left and right the ground is opening up beneath them and they're in big trouble got some uh, real temple of doom special effects here <laughs> yes i thought the same thing oh very much so uh, yeah a lot of a lot of temple of doom mine car action yeah. in this movie yeah. So finally, things subside. They survive. Celia needs to go tinkle. And uh, (laughs) I got your gold right here. (laughs) (laughs) The gold rush is on. Uh, They light a lantern and start looking for an exit. But Celia quickly sees something in the darkness, which is a giant gold nugget. Naturally. Naturally. We cut to the Quake City Bank where the nugget is behind bars and kind of the central vault area. Uh, it's got a, a custom made sign <laughs> proclaiming its value yeah. to be $87,000, $87,425. Like something from the Franklin Gym Museum. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. <laughs> discovered and with like the date it was discovered and the kids' names. <laughs> Uh, if, if, it was a ruby, if, it, if it was a ruby, I, that'd be absolutely correct. <laughs> yes. Um, I tried to find how much that would be in now money, but the uh, inflation calculator only goes back to like 1913. So sadly, I couldn't go back to 1879 or whatever it was. 
anyway, the, the, the banker, the assistant banker guy is like super excited about this and is kind of giving a spiel to the lookers on about how, you know, the price could have even gone up since they found out last got the word on how much gold is worth or whatever. So Donovan's talking business with the banker about how they've got to get the thing from San Francisco and then they'll get the thing and take it there and this and that. But uh, Theodore's looking. Kids really love this that part of the movie, you know. Well, yeah, it's like the uh, assay office in uh, Million Dollar Duck. That was such a subplot there. Or the Trade Federation in Star Wars. (laughs) (laughs) You also got gold. (laughs) Someone will steal our nugget, you. Oh, <laughs> hey, they're made for kids, so that's why they love that kind of stuff. Um, Theodore's looking in the window nearby. He and Amos are staking out the bank and planning to steal the gold. Surprisingly, Theodore has a plan to go through the skylight in the roof. But as they're standing there plotting, Amos accidentally sets Theodore's rear end on fire. And this is a dumb gag, but I do love love how they play it with harry morgan just harry morgan just walks by and says your rear ends on fire and walks off (laughs) and that was kind of funny and then uh, amos lights his cigarette off of uh theodore's backside because they're stupid um we find a very fancy hotel we've got uh the jared house nearby um (laughs) Donovan and the kids are eating in style. They got all the apple dumps they want. Uh, They're just bringing them out by the tray load. Yeah, that's that's quite the place. I know. Got the little string string duo there playing the violin. Or the fiddle, I guess it would be. Even so, yeah. Yeah. Fiddle. Sheriff comes in and asks Donovan if he's still planning on heading to New Orleans. Donovan says, yeah, as soon as I get things squared away in town, get the kids taken care of, I'll be off to my carpets. Sheriff says, a lot of people are suddenly anxious to take the youngsters to their bosoms. <laughs> says they, they want him to make the kids wards of the town and give them to some respectable family. So Donovan's like, oh, yeah, well, well, you know, that's good. Who wants them? And uh, all of a sudden, this, like, horde of horrific, scary old witches uh, burst into the room all at once and start grabbing at Celia. And they, like, rip up her new dress. But it's like, come here, me dear dude. It's, yeah, like a british movie like a hag or the yeah. beginning of pete's dragon again it's a crossover but yeah yes um yes. very odd and cartoonish and yeah the 70s well, don't, don't do that like homer dirty people don't. trying to exploit children yeah in, in 70s, <laughs> it's true <laughs> you have spoken to something bigger going on in the culture <sighs> yeah, I, that's I'll, true. I'll never forget though i mean side note that you guys told me to watch taxi driver and then we did <laughs> freaky friday right freaky after. Friday. <laughs> talk about 70s oh, movies man. a swing man. oh boy i'm, I'm just yeah. shocked you did it <laughs> it's like uh d you get the bins from that decompression <laughs> oh man but yeah these are like really like old world witches crones from right. the woods or whatever and uh, so Donovan area. like wrestles Celia away from these women, and he's upset, saying, "Well, they've got to be better people in town." The sheriff suggests Dusty. I'm like, well, what about uh, what about her? Donovan's like, "Well, she's not married." The sheriff says, "Well, that can change. That can be easily fixed," and starts hinting heavily that uh, Donovan should marry her. And Donovan is taken aback by this. But the sheriff says, sheriff's like, now don't be so hasty. He says, she's a fine specimen of womanhood. He says, I saw her get caught in a cloudburst <laughs> once, and I want to tell you. <laughs> I wrote that down. That's so amazing. <laughs> saw her caught in a cloudburst one time. 
And I want to tell you, I laugh so hard. That's very I funny. Love it. Very funny. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, the kids are super into the marriage idea, and even Donovan starts to like contemplate it. So later, the kids are talking about all the people who might adopt them and how they might abuse them in various ways. Uh, they are laying it on really thick for Donovan, trying to guilt him into staying. So his his idea is get out of town. And even like when talking about marrying Dusty, it's like marry Dusty, dump the kids on her, then leave. It's not like it's never really sticking around. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to guilt him into staying and, um, you know, talking about, oh, Mr. Whoever will, will probably beat us a lot, but then they'll lock us in, like lock us in the shed and all this stuff. And uh, Celia even drops a line about them being three whittle kids, which was funny. <laughs> and uh, that he even like calls Donovan calls her out on it. Three whittle kids. Uh, Donovan's finally worn down. Says, "Fine, he'll ask Dusty." So it's three whittle kids, and calls them three little. Oh, what, I can't remember what he calls them, but it's uh, I don't know, something bad. And then they're like, "Well, what does that mean?" Back in town, Amos and Theodore are approaching the bank. Oh, God. First, they have to steal a ladder as the no, first part not of their the quest. Ladder. Uh, yeah, you steal a ladder from the fire department. Thus begins a series of shenanigans too complex for me to describe here as they try to get the <laughs> oversized ladder out from under the nose of a sleeping firefighter and his dog. That aren't Boston. interesting. That aren't interesting. No. It's like all predictable, no. the, and especially once they leave the the sleeping firefighter, which was like the fire station was very uh, Herbie Lovebug. I was wondering that if it uh, was it the same set. I had that in my notes, but but uh, and then the the sleeping firefighter was like some kind of Mark Davis creation, a yeah. really funny looking it's guy, like the guy in the on Tom Sawyer Island in the fort who's like. Yeah. Right. Like sleeping in a guard guard house or something like but, that. Yeah, after that it's so boring and it's like, yes. oh, they're gonna do they're gonna pass it and then he's not gonna be ready and it's gonna go through so oh yep, yeah, there we go. I mean and before that you had the earthquake scene that just seemed to go on forever. Then you follow it up with this that just goes on forever and it's like, Come on, movie, give us it's, a break here. Yeah. And I I thought, you know, there's there's a lot of nostalgia involved but i thought like when this when donovan was like weighing what to do with the kids it's like oh there's some char character development here like mm -hmm. donovan is kind of an interesting character and like this is an interesting dilemma what's he gonna do and then it's like oh let's do this and i'm just like out of it just out of it yeah yeah wanting it it's to be so over frustrating it's just exhausting and i i mean I, i'm, I'm maybe alone here but I felt like there were at least some beats in their other shtick they were doing that I would chuckle at. Yeah. But this one, I I was just... Well, I mean, they're still them. I mean, they're inherently funny. But it's just like, they're like, okay. It's like they had like a like a three martini lunch where they're like, let's name everything you can do with the ladder. And <laughs> I feel like we've had this conversation before. You know, yeah. on another movie. It's like... Let's just do everything because it's going to be great and kids are going to love and it. And do it multiple times. Right. That's what kills me is when they'll do something and it's like, okay. Uh, and then they'll do it again like five minutes later. It's like, no, you already did that. Right. We've seen it already. Stop, please. But yeah, it's it's like punishment because you get this stuff like like I I enjoy all the stuff with like Donovan and the, mm -hmm. even with the kids. I enjoy that stuff. And the stuff with the sheriff, I thought all that stuff was funny. So, you, you know, and the stuff with Dusty's good. And then, but then he comes to this and it's like running into a brick wall. Yeah, yes. it is. It's, it's just brutal. But anyway, yeah, it is totally like they were like, what every gag you can think of. And then let's use it all. So they do. They finally get the ladder out, sort of wind up using it as a bridge to get onto the bank's roof. And you can imagine. I will back up. I, I did chuckle slightly when Donovan reacted to them. 
Yes. Again, oh, yeah. With the yeah. Donovan, because they've got the the ladder. They wind up getting it out, but it's like sticking out both sides of a building, and like uh, Theodore's on one side and Amos is on the other, just casually leaning against the ladder. And Donovan comes by and sees one. It's like uh, and he sees they the could other. have fumbled the ladder for like maybe once in the in the firehouse, ran it out the window, and then did this gag, and that would have been perfect. It would have mm-hmm. been solid. Yeah. 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 Agreed. So they're up on this crying, just falling apart ladder, rickety, crunching ladder, and uh, trying to get on top of the bank roof. And you can imagine what comes next. And they all wind up falling. We get a goofy wahaha who as Theodore falls to the street below. <laughs> Meanwhile, goofy across holler, was town, a little, it was a startling. Like a, yeah, it's like we're cutting between movies here, separate movies. Uh, we we find Donovan making his pitch to Dusty, but it's not going well. She, she wants to know what he would get out of this arrangement and seems to imply that he has another agenda going, which is a continuing thread. Or, as Donovan puts it, would he exercise his husbandly prerogatives? Another Lebowski uh. line. Yes. <laughs> another another line which uh, these are the lines that stuck in my head the most. <laughs> prerogative? <laughs> no, I'm not trying to exercise my husbandly prerogatives or anything. Just trying to get rid of these kids, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to get rid of these kids, man. Yeah, come on. <laughs> it's it, this is kind that of is a perfect. Uh, Donovan yeah. is kind of a Lebowski character. He is good. He's like He's thrown good. into this situation. He's just trying to get out of here, man. I'm just trying to get to New Orleans, man. Yeah, let's just get yeah. these carpets, man. Am- Amos is Donnie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Theodore. Uh, what was John Goodman's character? Uh, Walter? Walter. Yeah. Theodore's Walter. And Slim Pickens is a uh, nihilist. Here we go. <laughs> I don't believe in anything. Anyway, uh, Donovan insists the deal is just to ensure a good home for the kids. Gives his word as a gentleman. Dusty finally says she'll go along with the plan as long as Donovan gets out of town as soon as possible. As but why planned. is she agreeing to it? What does she get I out of it? No, uh, she's a softy. She has feelings. She's 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 got her feelings, you know. Because she's a woman. Her lady feelings. It has been established. As she, is, wants, she wants as that has brass previously bed. been established. Yeah. <laughs> she is a woman. Back at the bank, Hamus and Theodore have a new scheme that involves having their mule hoist Theodore up on the roof. So we've got Amos on one side of the bank with the mule with the rope going over Stop. the bank. Theodore on the other side. Do you think this is the moment when they're like, hey, we should do you know, you've got Don Knotts, Tim Conway, and a mule. <laughs> Uh, G- Gus comes out a year That's later. That's right. This oh, that that was that three martini lunch. They're like, name everything you can do with a mule, and they're like, no time for that. But I got but it idea. could it could kick field goals. Kick a field goal. They had uh, football they that one down. <laughs> they were watching a football game during this three martini lunch. <laughs> Probably so. Yeah, that's when they, they were inspiration hit. Ron Miller going over his old USC plays. That's right. Jane, <laughs> Colin, Jane, Jane. Uh, so the mule doesn't want to move because it's a mule. Theodore nearly hangs himself with the rope they're using because they're not communicating well. And uh, we get variations on all the same gags from before. They're not well, well, they've got little sounds they're making. It was comical to see the mule sitting down. That made me laugh. Yeah. Just the just looks ridiculous. Yeah. Mule does not want to move. Theodore's getting impatient. Eventually, the kids come strolling past and see Theodore loitering in the alley by the bank. And uh, while they're talking, of course, the mule starts to move slowly, like step by step, which kind of makes Theodore start levitating off the ground. And the kids are kind of baffled by this. Theodore's trying to shoo them away. They're like, how are you doing that? These kind of like perpetually stoned children. <laughs> I got to say, that? in the writer's <laughs> defense, I remember thinking this was really funny as a kid. The the levitating thing. Yeah. I thought that was pretty well, funny. Well, of course, because it's Don Nods. He plays it. Yeah. He plays it off well. 
And, uh, you know, again, if done in a vacuum without all the other stuff, fine. Yeah, right. Eventually, Amos swats the mule's rump. And he gets mad, swats the mule, and Theodore is rocketed to the roof again. I, I mean, it's sped up, but I just, you know, I would love to see the behind-the-scenes footage on this of, like, all right, boys, go. <laughs> Get him up there. Next day, the bank clerk is bringing the sheriff to the bank. Everybody's still kind of in their pajamas because the bank clerk has been opening the bank and found this. Amos and Theodore hanging from their rope in front of the vault in the middle of the bank. And the sheriff, you know, pulls out his gun, shoots the rope, drops them to the floor, and immediately goes into trial mode. Uh, declares them instantly guilty of bank robbery and sentences them to death. <laughs> How many With times uh, do you dread? Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> How many times do you think Harry Morgan's played a judge in his life? Oh man, he did it. Uh, what was that movie? Uh, in, holiday, in holiday a, affair. In a holiday affair. Yeah, that was in like, old, the fifties. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Still doing yeah. it. Yeah, he's he's good at it. Uh, finds him an extra ten bucks for perjury because he's like, "Did you rob the bank? Are you trying to rob the bank?" No. So that's perjury and death tells them to be down at the oak tree by boot hill at noon for their hanging to bring their own rope <laughs> and uh, they leave kind of slowly the banker says they're so dumb they might actually show up for their hanging and uh sheriff says well if they do then they deserve to be hanged sheriff says he just wants to get them out of town and the gold too says there's a lot of people out to get the nugget a lot of shady characters around so we cut away to a mountaintop where the aforementioned former boss of Amos and Theodore, uh, the bandit Stillwell. Yeah. It, yeah. And his rope cyber leg. Uh, <laughs> he, he's checking out the bank through his spyglass. And he's got his whole gang there and they're ready for action. They're like, we've been up here for three days. Let's go. Let's do something. And he's like, no, got to be careful. Because they could be walking into a hornet's nest. Every, every time you got one of these down home sheriffs, everybody's a vigilante. So his legs bothering him, or the leg that Amos shot, he's got like a brace on it and uh, quite a contraption. Says if he ever gets within shooting distance of Amos, he's going to have windows where his ears was. So back in town, we hear the wedding march in a minor key. <laughs> as donovan dusty and the kids make their way to find the sheriff slash barber slash justice of the peace uh, the sheriff's pretty anxious to get the couple hitched ask if they want all the trimmings dusty kind of wants to hear all the nice words but donovan's like yeah let's just get it over with always a charmer that donovan donovan doesn't have a ring either and uh the judge is like well it's not legal without a ring so he gets a little brass ring off of a bottle and a little fancy perfume bottle. Sheriff does a very abrupt ceremony. <laughs> do you do you take him? Do you take her? Uh, Donovan just hands the ring to Dusty. And the sheriff pronounces them hitched. Says they don't have to kiss, but they ought to at least shake on it. Which they do. <laughs> sheriff says, well, he's buying if, they're, if they don't have anything else better to do. So Donovan asks Dusty to take the kids so he can go to the saloon. Which again, why? I, the, the thing of Dusty not being saloon, yeah, friendly is still sketchy to me. But can be because of her dad. That, that's an interesting. It's uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a valuable like lesson there. So Dusty and the kids head off to the dry goods store to get some candy and some other stuff, some supplies. She notices someone had bought the brass bed she was admiring before. Uh, the guy in the store says, yeah, I sold that bed to Donovan, which triggers Dusty very intensely. <laughs> she <laughs> storms down to the saloon, calls Donovan out, starts throwing stuff at him, chasing him around the room, throwing back all his quotes from earlier about his word as a gentleman. And she is tearing up the place. And Donovan oh, yeah. is terrified. As is he, everyone else. I thought he was great in his reactions again. Yes. So, so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> just, just let me get one word. It's like, Dusty. Yeah. It, all of his reactions. His like, wait, stop, 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 stop. Um, funny, 
funny. And uh, it is a good reason for him to be terrified because she finally clocks him with a spittoon really hard and uh, douses him with a beer. And uh, Donovan finally gets her to say what the problem is, which is the bed. But obviously, he says he bought the bed for the kids, which he explains very angrily and in a funny level. It's a funny, like, energy shift because she is so up to 11. And then once she says what it is, and then he gets mad, and then she's kind of cornered. And he, like, gets her, like, hands in uh, whatever you call the thing that you rack billiard balls with, back pool balls with, the little triangle thing, he, like, gets her, like, gets her hands, like, bound in that so she can't attack him. And, uh, and the bed is for Celia. <laughs> so she says, why didn't you say that in the first place? We might have avoided this little misunderstanding. He says, Celia, this, this is no place for a lady. Let's go. And leaves. And so we end Act Two. Oh, oh, Dusty, Dusty, now look, what's bothering you? That bed, that great big brass bed. If you had no intention of exercising your husbandly prerogatives, why'd you buy that bed? That's it? The bed? Yes! The bed happens to be for the kids, Dusty. With the nights getting colder, they need a warmer place to sleep. So the brass bed is for the boys, and the smaller bed is for Celia! Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? And we could have avoided this little misunderstanding. This is no place for a lady. He really has grown a lot, you know. Getting he gives a really, um, really troubling line where he says, that when, "When you get rational, we'll discuss this." <laughs> Which, uh, if I used Which that on my th- wife, I would, uh, I would not be <laughs> sitting here. You yeah. should try that. Yeah, a black eye or two. That's right. right. It should be fair. She is totally demolishing the building that he is in. So, uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, quite a scene. All right. Well, something big is going on at Miners Union Hall. Everybody and their brothers there, <clears throat> and uh, and not a place to park your horse. I mean, everything's <laughs> all the spots are taken. Ballet Rubber. parking only. <laughs> It's, uh, <laughs> it's quite the turnout. I mean, it's a trial to see who the kids should live with. Union Hall. Du- so you got Donovan and Dusty, and the kids are there in the front row. And then in the back, there's this rowdy bunch who all want the kids that we've talked about. But they're all busy fighting and putting each other in headlocks. <laughs> Quake, Quake City's starting to turn into Rock Ridge for me. I mean, that's yes. kind of where I'm, I'm, I'm getting at this point. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, the sheriff tries to call everyone to order has to fire his pistol to get their attention. And he thanks everyone for turning up to show that this town has a heart and cares about these children and their financial assets. But ultimately, he decides that it is Donovan and Dusty who should be their caretakers. Well, the rest of the town's folk aren't happy about this decision. And there's lots of murmuring going on until, well, look who it is. Look who's finally showed up. It's John Wintle, the I guess he was the uncle. Was that, was that what he was? Yeah, is there an uncle, I think. The un- yeah, the, the one who was supposed to claim them at the stagecoach who you know, asked Donovan to do it. He would have well, been a good smuggler Star Wars character. Just his greasy <laughs> affect. Yeah. Because he's and his walking accent. in and he's gotten yeah. like, so he's gotten wind of the kid's good fortune, and he shows up like all dressed up, fancy like, and he's got this fancy lawyer who comes in with him, and uh, they hand the sheriff some documents uh, proving that the kids belong to him. And <laughs> Sheriff Homer, he's uh, he, he does not like these guys at all. <laughs> he, I, mean, I think he has some words for him. I can't remember some of the lines, but he really kind of tears into him a bit. But really, his hands are tied because he's bound by the law to give the children over to Wintel and his, uh, he calls them a jack leg lawyer, which I thought was a good term. That lawyer guy was hilarious to me. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, this is kind of like enormous dude. It was like, hello. 
uh, sometime later, the colonel uh, is recounting this whole story. Uh, I guess that that's his whole purpose in this movie is just to like <laughs> move along with some exposition. But he's telling the whole story uh, about the gold to the new reverend in town. Only it turns out that this is not a man of the cloth, but rather Frank Stillwell himself. What? Dang, master yeah. of disguise. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, he's used to playing a, a preacher from Robin Hood. I know. Mm. All ties together. Well, Stillwell is prodding the colonel for details about the gold, uh, such as its whereabouts, um, and uh, who's going to be, you know, guarding the the gold, things like that. And so, uh, also, he was wanting to know kind of what the route is going to be used to. Uh, for the transporting of the gold and uh, the Colonel offers up all those details and he even offers to buy the Reverend a drink, but uh, still well in character refuses, but still gladly accepts the money as a donation to the church and leaves. Um, I definitely got Sheriff of Nottingham vibes there when he did that. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, well, back on the stagecoach, excuse me, back at the stagecoach, Donovan presents Dusty with an, with the annulment papers since their arrangement was just for the children's benefit. Uh, he thanks her for what she did, and she she was willing to do it for those children, even though they weren't successful. And he bids her adieu, but Dusty isn't ready to let it go yet. Uh, she's I mean, she's developed some feelings for Donovan, and uh, they share some words and apologies for misunderstandings. And then Donovan moved in for what I thought he I thought he was going to move in to kiss her. Yeah, but, me too. But then, but then he just shakes her hand, and that made me laugh. Uh, when I'm, uh, I don't know why, it just made me laugh. To do something like that. I, I guess it reminds me of the Andy Griffith show when uh, the Barney was supposed to. Barney walked some uh, somewhere. I think it was a uh, Thelma Lou to the door, and he said, well, "Did you kiss her?" And he said, "Nah, I just shook her hand." And that's always just made me laugh. Think about <laughs> shaking their hand like that. Uh, so, anyways, Dusty is upset. She's tearing up, and as Donovan walks away, she removes her wedding ring. And hey, you know what? I have a thought. Let's check in with the characters who are on the movie poster. How about it? Because it's been a while since we've seen them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Theodore and Amos. I mean, that would make sense, right? To kind of like see what they're up to. Because there's really, you know, all over this thing. Well, Teddy and Amos are sitting around an unlit campfire trying to keep warm. And they come up. Uh, yeah, they come up with how they're going to avoid jail or freezing to death. Because Amos suggests that they just promise the sheriff that they won't rob banks anymore, and he says we can even cross, uh, we can even cross our hearts. Uh, to which Theodore agrees that that's a good idea. <laughs> These guys are so dumb. Oh, well, then once again the Bradley children are able to walk up right behind them, uh, and <laughs> uh, you know completely catch them off guard unintentionally. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and they offer their gold nugget to the outlaws because their thinking is that. Now, this was pretty good. Their thinking is that if they give their gold away, then Wendell won't want them anymore, and they'll be able to go back to Donovan and Dusty. Smart, which is not, man. It's not a bad plan. That makes no, sense it's, to me. It makes perfect sense. Well, then the two outlaws confer, and Theodore's worried about throwing in with a bunch of kids, because how's that going to look in the history books? <laughs> that made me laugh, too, because like, he thinks that there's some worthy of being in the history books. But, uh, but Amos finally convinces him that the, and they say, all right, we'll do this, and we'll call the kids the Apple Dumpling Gang. Boom. Ah. Title. It's all coming together now. Well, they come up with a plan for getting the gold using some dynamite and stealing a wagon. Robert, Red Dead Online, that reminds you of anything? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're big fans of dynamite. <laughs> yes. uh, cut to the five of them in town making final preparations uh, and Amos sure, uh, shows up with a wagon, uh, and it's the fireman's wagon because it's all he could find. Besides, they're the fastest horses in town. Well, at, at the bank, Stillwell, who's still masquerading as the preacher, knocks on the door of the bank, and uh, the, the bank man, MacGyver, I just put in there, opens the door to tell him that they're closed, and Stillwell pulls a pistol on them. And the kids are hanging around the, the bank, to be lookouts and they see this all this going on and they're like oh Stillwell's robbing the bank so they take off run to tell I, I guess Amos and Theodore but then as soon as they're in, they come around the corner there's Stillwell's gang and his men and they capture them and they take them into the bank 
Well, Stillwell and his men get the safe open and they start carrying out the gold just as Amos and Theodore bust in with masks on, with their pistols out, and they're holding a few sticks of dynamite saying, this is a stick-up. Unfortunately, one of Stillwell's men has them covered already and they're immediately captured. And guaranteed he had an interesting name that we never heard. Right. Yeah, guaranteed. <laughs> Maybe it was Slippery. Slippery said. Yeah, it could be. It's pretty well, slippery. St- Stillwell is not happy to see, and uh, excuse me, is not happy to discover that it is Theodore and Amos. Uh, Amos again, who shot him in the leg. Um, and the the bank man, he tries to convince, um, convince Stillwell not to shoot them since Amos could drop that dynamite because that dynamite's sweating. Uh, and it can blow them all sky <laughs> high. I might sweating. <laughs> Stillwell gets the, the bank owner to walk out in front of them as he and his gang carry the gold. But the brave or dumb Clovis tries to stop them and ends up kicking Stillwell in his bad leg, making him drop the gold chest on Amos's foot. And then we get a big series of physical comedy of you know, Tim Conway just making faces as... <laughs> As they, he's like, yep, this heavy gold is on my foot. That went. There on. was an they amazing moment where he like leaned all the way over, like straight, and it's like, yeah, I mean, these guys are really good at what they do. It's just they were if used with more subtlety. They could have really excelled. Uh huh. Yeah, because they are great. I mean, and Don Knotts, of course, is the master of all those look takes and had so many good ones. And yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Well, just then, Dusty, the sheriff, and the other guards show up, and one of Stillwell's men starts firing at them. I think he like just shoots one guy like point blank. Yeah, he Uh, does. Wasted. Yeah, (laughs) but it's. uh, I think, but that guy's like he just gets shot in the arm, but he really looks like he's point blank in the chest. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And uh, this big, huge gunfight breaks out, and Dusty finds herself in the middle of the street, taking fire when Donovan arrives. And he sees her in danger, and he swoops in to get her to safety. Uh, then he, too, joins in the gunfight with, with his little Derringer pistol. Yeah, I was like, that's not going to do anything. Yeah, come on, buddy. Yeah, I did enjoy that when the gunfight breaks out, like, literally everybody. It's almost like Blazing Saddles. It's yeah. like literally everybody has guns. There's, like, this little yes. old lady with, like, a bonnet who pulls out, yeah. like, a shotgun. Yes, Mildred. Yeah, yeah Mildred. Mildred. That's right. Cover Mildred. me, Mildred. <laughs> <laughs> All of this is going on, and the colonel is just wanting to keep on drinking. He's still <laughs> he's still in the saloon, and uh, that was strange. And but Theodore's trying to get the gold chest off of Amos's foot, all while trying not to drop the dynamite while bullets are flying all around him. So yeah, I mean, just more physical comedy. Just the Don Knotts and Tim Conway doing what they do. Um, it is pretty well choreographed. I mean, just because they're it's like this the the crate goes up and down and then they're tossing this dynamite back and forth so i mean it it was probably it took a little bit of effort to figure out what they were gonna do i would think it, it did because i mean there's times where like don Knotts is like catching the dynamite in his in between his feet yeah like throwing it up in the air and catching it back in his hand that kind of stuff yeah well Stillwell realizes they're in a tight spot and decides to abandon the gold and use the children as shields <laughs> Disney, everyone, Smart. Disney, uh, and, uh, and and head out the back door. And that's when the bank owner tries to stop them from taking the children and still will straight up just pistol whips them. Oh, <laughs> man, brutal. that was brutal, too. <laughs> yeah. Fucks oh, him hard. Right in the face, too. It's like, Pah. yeah. Uh, well, meanwhile, inside, Theodore finally gets the gold chest off of Amos's toes. But in doing so, he throws out his back and now he can't move. Uh, the sheriff and the townsfolk hold their fire and they slowly move in with the sheriff asking, like Robert said, asking Mildred to cover him with that double barrel shotgun. Uh, then suddenly the Stillwell gang flies around the corner on the firefighting wagon and uh, Celia is screaming for Donovan who chases after her, but not before he and Dusty do some impressive mounting on their horses. You know, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like rodeo. So, you know, I mentioned it, before we started that there were just moments where my memory would come clear and whatever the fire wagon came into the scene, mm-hmm. I, I remembered everything vividly. So I must have really enjoyed seeing the fire wagon. 
but then everything would just kind of go blurry again after the fire wagon would leave. And I really think that I might, I would just, I would put down my, my peanut butter and jelly sandwich and watch you know, the fire wagon. The fire, wagon. fire wagon's very nice. I enjoyed this fire Mama, wagon. Fire wagon. Mama, look. <laughs> oh, fire wagon's again. gone. I went back to a sandwich. <laughs> So that's my theory. I thought that's probably pretty accurate knowing how I was, you know, back in 80, probably 85 when I saw this. Well, the other two boys get left behind uh, and the sheriff captures a few of Stillwell's men. And as the rest of the town move in on the bank, they see Amos and Theodore still inside and they start firing on them again. Uh, and then the chase music kicks in as Donovan and Dusty chase down the wagon, tearing down the road and firing at them. Now, where would this be? Was that the Golden Ranch or whatever? The Golden Ranch. I Golden Ranch. I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't know if this was like somewhere else on location or if it was there. I don't. Mm. I don't know. Okay. Well, Donovan is able to get alongside of the wagon and jumps over to it, and then he begins to fight with Stillwell, giving which gives Celia time to jump to Dusty's horse, and the wagon hits a log, sending the driver and the horses one direction while Stillwell and Donovan head another direction down a hill into the raging river. That was quite it, a stunt. It was. I, I will give them credit because, I mean, there's a lot of silly blue screen in this, but there's also a lot of, like, real snot work going on. Yeah. Because they've got the two horses that are chasing this wagon, and you've got mm-hmm. Stillwell on the back of the, the hook and ladder with the whatever where you can sort of move the the back side of the wagon the back and forth yeah i don't i don't <laughs> i don't know that's from a sign for me fire so. but um yep. uh but going like going back and forth and back and forth and like dodging the horses and stuff and it's it's pretty impressive but i did laugh when the uh the guy who was driving was the token sort of bandito member of Stillwell's gang yeah so he he winds up getting bumped off and it's just him and the two horses and like they're you know the the stuff that's harnessing them together and he just kind of goes off and he's just kind of like oh no 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 this is sort of angry sort of spanish accented <laughs> no it's bueno blah, 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 blah. yeah <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. So the two continue to fight as they go over the rapids. And Donovan finally knocks Stillwell into the water. And I guess it knocks him out, but he's kind of holding like the hose. And yeah. Donovan finally knocks Stillwell into the water. But then he, he pulls him out of the water once they reach the safety of the shore. I guess all this is to avoid kids asking their parents if he drowned. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, honey, he did. Uh, Dusty is so happy that Donovan is okay that she just jumps off her horse and straight up tackles him into the water. And they have a makeout sesh. Yeah, Uh, seriously. Then the sheriff and the others arrive. And the sheriff says that they better get back to town to check on that gold nugget. But just then, a a nice um, pre-CGI explosion is... (laughs) happens yes. <laughs> fireball it looked like it was on the forest moon of indoor that's what i was gonna say yes, yes. that shot killed that's me true. i was like oh they're in i was indoor. cracking up grand sure yeah made me laugh very grand <laughs> yeah the bank's been destroyed <laughs> bricks and dust are everywhere and uh apparently gold nuggets are now scattered everywhere too as the townsfolk scramble to pick up what they can but there's no sign of amos or theodore well, meanwhile, the, here comes the colonel. And he's stumbling out of the saloon, drunk as <laughs> a skunk. And he's oblivious to everything. I, I mean, I still don't know what his deal was, but it was just so strange. And then the, the sheriff and Donovan and Dusty and the others arrive back in town. And With dry Bobby, clothes on now, mind you. Oh. It's that <laughs> wind in the carriage, you know? Yeah, it must mm-hmm. be, yeah. Oh, Bobby and Clovis tell Donovan that Amos and Theodore were in the bank when it exploded. And just then, the door to the safe creaks open, falling off and revealing Amos and Theodore, who were hiding in there, and they're perfectly safe. Um, it's kind of an Indiana Jones getting into yep. the 
<laughs> refrigerator I, moment. I thought the exact same thing. I said, like, this, you know, this is where they got it. This is where Spielberg picked it up. <laughs> uh, I love stuff. that scene in Apple Dumpling Gang. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Joe, Harrison, Harrison, what do you think of this? A scene in uh, Apple Dumpling Gang where they <laughs> go into the safe. I find it quite hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's a Disney movie. Uh, a few days later, Donovan is loaded up on a wagon with Colonel, with the Colonel, uh, and he's and the kids are sitting in the back. And the mayor and the sheriff present. Uh, oh, excuse me. I guess it was the mayor. Or it was the bank owner. Uh, I think yeah. it was the mayor too, though. Was I he think the mayor? At the, at the start, they called him mayor, so maybe he was mm-hmm. both. Okay, kind of like the sheriff was played multiple, wore multiple yeah. hats. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So they present him with the reward money for helping capture the Stillwell gang. Along with the deed to the Benson place, and still, and, and Donovan finally has the money he needs to open his own place with red carpets and chandeliers. But then he thinks on it a moment, and and here comes Dusty, and she's coming down the stairs dressed all ladylike. And he realizes that he'd like to settle down with her instead, and she joins them in the wagon. He tells Dusty that. Uh, he's still going to be going, coming to town one or two nights a week to play poker. And she responds with a wanna bet and a sly Ooh. grin. Whoa. Hello. Hello. Well, up ahead on the road is Amos and Theodore, who appear to be ready to do another hold up. But really, they've decided that they've been the scourge of the West for long enough, which I thought was funny. And they're heading, they're hanging up their firearms for good. And they just want to ride on the wagon for some reason. And yeah, Donovan's like, all right, climb on. And I was, well, I'm, I'm this whole time. I'm like, what? I, yeah. First of all, I just want the movie to be over with. But the yes. second of all, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Uh, what? I think, I think I they're going to go ranch li- hands. Yeah. Okay. So they're, they're, they're going to go live with them or something. That's what, that's what I, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Felt like so, be plenty of room for everybody at Chateau Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyways, they all ride off happy and laughing, and the lyrics to the music say that Donovan and Dusty remarry, settling down with the whole group being called the Apple Dumpling Gang. And we get a lone or that that last plea from Celia to use the bathroom, saying, "Mr. Donovan, I gotta go." Hang a button on it. And gents, that brings this film to a close. So they settle down together, their troubles all behind. Now that Donovan and Dusty tied the knot. And their friends wish them happiness as all the church bells rang. For that family called the Apple Dumpling Gang. Mr. Donovan, I gotta go. And they called them the Apple Dumpling Gang. Oh boy. <laughs> there it is. Apple dumpling. Should be dumpling. Should have been a dumpling, dumpling game. That yeah. apostrophe. It's, it's all a part of the editing process. All right. Well, let's uh let's go ahead and and grade this thing using our custom made grading scale tonight. Robert, what do we got tonight? Oh, it's a no-brainer on this one. It's the bowls of son of a gun stew. <laughs> oh yeah, I thought it All might right. be cherished tokens of a lady's affection. <laughs> son of a gun stew. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be stopping on the side of the road, having to use the bathroom. Oh, yeah, bathroom gosh. breaks. Bathroom yeah. breaks. <laughs> All good options. Well, it's uh, bowls of son of a gun stew. Uh, one to five. I'll have five, please. Plot and writing. Robert, I'm going to start with you. Oh, man. So this is like textbook Disney formula here. And it's, mm-hmm. I mean, we have our shtick. We have a chase scene. We have long, drawn-out comedy stuff. We have one-liners that don't really land. Um, but whittled in there are some little uh you know moments i think that's just enough to keep it above a one for me so i'm gonna go in with a two i'll agree with the two i'll i'll give it a stronger two uh, in that i think the kid plot line is interesting i think donovan is interesting i think this could have been a much better movie so they deserve to be punished on this front 
but the raw material for it, I like, and I like some of the writing for it. Um, it's just like we said, the, the plot and how it gets sidetracked with this stuff. It's just, it's too city. Uh, Andy, what about you? Uh, I definitely agree. I, I, I'm in the two area as well. Um, there are enough lines to make me chuckle and enough moments. To, like you said, I, I see potential, but uh, I could not get up to a three, but it, it's not as bad as one. So yeah, two bowls of son of a gun stew. Mm. Michael? <laughs> I'll give it a, a week three. I, uh, I, I mean, everything you guys said, it's, I was I was actually interested in all of the non Amos and Theodore stuff. Uh, I was interested in it, and there are enough lines in this that I mean, obviously, the fact that I like however many years slash decades later I remember these lines means that there's something memorable about it, and enough lines that really did make me laugh. Um, so I'll for that I'll be a little generous. Give it a give it a three. Okay, we're going to stay with you. Go casting and acting. How many bowls for this? I mean, nobody was bad. I, I'll give it a four because everybody. Oh, hello. I mean, I love all these character actors. I love Harry Morgan. Um, Donovan was really cool, dude. And the kids weren't. The kids weren't given really anything to do, but they weren't like bad 70s kids. So I, I just got really nothing much to fault it on. All right. Andy, what about you? I can't be that generous. Uh, I, I agree that I th- I thought everyone did a, you know, a decent enough job, but I don't think that no one did a great job except, uh, again, to me, Bill Bigsby really is the this the shining so star good. of this yeah. movie. Yeah. I think Agreed. he was he was really the the heart of this movie. And um I I just hate how they seem to keep just wasting Don Knotts and Tim Connolly. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um I but I don't fault the casting for that or the acting. It's just more of like I I don't know. But so I'm gonna go with a three three yeah, three bowls of Son of a Gun stew. Okay, what about you, Robert? Yeah, I'm in Andy's camp. Uh, just I feel like Bixby, you know, carried. I like Sim, Slim Pickens. Uh, I thought he picked yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah. When he definitely. showed up, and uh, but uh, yeah, three for me as well. Uh, I agree. I agree from all that's been said. And and I thought Susan Clark did a decent job. You know, yeah. as Dusty. I, think well, I thought she, she was good, strong enough. She carried. Mm-hmm. I mean, she, when she and uh, Bixby together, I thought they really worked. Uh, like that moment where. When he, when he shakes her hand, that was a good scene between the, the two of them. So. Mm-hmm. There Agreed. are several, yeah. several. Production value, I'll start us off here. I'm going to give this a four because, uh, out of love, because uh, I just thought that, uh, I I found it charming how they were using all the stuff we've talked about. Like It just felt like a really old school movie where they're using miniatures and location and soundstage and back lot. Um, and the aesthetic doesn't hurt either. Uh, I am grading on a curve, but I love Buddy Baker's music. And so I will give it a four. Uh, Robert, what about you? I'm tempted to go up to a four. I, I liked the, I mean, I thought the stunt, the stunt coordination was, was mm-hmm. impressive. We didn't really talk about it much, but the, where they, uh, grab, uh, the girl, the, uh, um, Name just left my head. Uh, Celia. 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 Uh, out of the middle of the street with the horses bearing down on her. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That, that had to have been a dummy. I can't imagine they would have stuck anybody out there in front of a team of horses like that. I don't know. It's the 70s, man. Maybe That's it was. True. But and then, uh, I mean, the, and the music. I, I like the music a lot. I enjoy the music. So I'm probably going to stick with what I originally thought with a three. Okay. What but about it's, you, it's, Andy? It's a high three. High three. Andy? Uh, I'm going to agree with Robert. I, I'm in the three as well. Um, I don't really have much much to add other than what you guys have already said. So, yeah, just three for me. Michael? I'll go with a four. I'm a sucker for the sort of Disney Western aesthetic. And I, I like that they did a lot of shooting on location. That was really cool. And, uh, yeah, I just like the look of 
the look of everything, which I guess is the whole point, and the stunt stuff and the music stuff all adds up for me. All right, Andy, let's get back to you for entertainment value. How entertained were you by the Apple Dumpling game? Unfortunately, I was not very entertained. Uh, the, to me, this movie, while there are moments that I enjoyed, for the most part, I was pretty bored watching this movie. Uh, it's not something that I think I would return to. Uh, and so I, I don't think it's like awful. It's not, you know, uh, happiest millionaire <laughs> awful. <laughs> but uh, I think for me, it's it's more of in the two realm. So I'm going to go with the two. I'm going to go a little higher. I'm going to say a three and, uh, you know, all my nostalgia trying to turn against that. But honestly, those ac- some of the action scenes and the, all the Don Knotts and uh, Tim Conway stuff and how they were used really drug it down. And honestly, I usually do entertainment value on like, am I going to watch this again all the way through? And I don't know um, if I would, but I would watch like parts of this all the time. I mean, I love the, some of it like the beginning and um, you know, some of the stuff's really funny. So I'll say a three, Uh, Michael, what about you? I'll also say three. It is funny. Like we talk about, I feel it comes up a lot that there are movies that are just kind of, meh all the way through and then there are movies that some parts are really good and some parts are really bad and those are the weird ones to judge Mm -hmm. because i I, like what you said about would i watch this again it's like yeah but i would totally fast forward or like yeah my phone during the amos and theodore stuff yeah you know so uh for me it's like perfect middle of the road three we're gonna end up with robert how many bowls of son of gun stew do you give it's going to be a three for me as well. I think uh, I'm, I'm right there in step with you, Jeff. Uh, I, I would probably go back to this movie again, but maybe just for parts. I'm not sure if I'd ever watch it all the way through from start to finish. But, uh, I mean, there was there enough there was enough there that I enjoyed that I, I would give it a three. I, I would go back for the, the parts I enjoyed. So, so some consensus today. Pretty close ratings. On this one, let's plug it into the computer that wore tennis shoes and see what the Apple Dumpling Gang got where it lands. The Apple Dumpling Gang came in with a 2.94. A little surprising. I thought uh, earlier uh, when we were discussing it, I thought it was going to come in at a, you know in the low twos, but uh, it's a, I mean right there almost at a three, um, just below Sword in the Stone. And it's attractive squirrels at three, <laughs> and just above Freaky Friday Revisited with a 2.88 and the black hole murder robots with a 2.88 and snowball express woes with a 2.88. <laughs> wow. That is some fitting company. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. A good middle of the road. I mean, yeah, it's, you get what you, yeah. What comes with the times. All right. Well, we've said what we have to say about the Apple Dumbling game. Michael, what did Leonard Malton say about it? Shockingly, shockingly, I could not find any evidence of Leonard Malton commenting on the Apple Dumpling Gang. Seems to be right. Which down just his seems alley. like is a yeah. natural. Hmm. We can uh, so, uh, yeah. no, we'll just have to tweet at him and ask him what that's a good idea. Now we're talking. Yeah. Get him on the show. Yeah, absolutely. We're like we're going to do two hours about Apple Dumpling Gang. <laughs> well, that is the Apple Dumpling Gang, and uh, I'm curious what's coming up next, Robert. What is next? Boy, it's it, it's surprising. We are at Christmas. Wow, it is coming up. We are in December right now. Um, so our Christmas episode will be coming out at the end of the month, obviously, and um. We had a lot of mixed input from uh, our illustrious society when we were trying to figure out which episode to do for Christmas. I, and uh, a lot of the uh, suggestions got panned. Um, so I, I finally made an executive decision to jerk the wheel and, and go with a deep cut here. And and while sifting through the movies on Disney+, Plus, one uh, made its way to the top. It's a heartwarming Christmas classic worthy of the Hallmark Channel. With the description reading, and I quote, 
a young mother rediscovers the joy and beauty of Christmas thanks to the unshakable faith of her six-year-old daughter. Now, um, I remember seeing this movie. I'm not sure where, but it might have been in the theaters um, or on the Disney really? Channel, but uh, I do remember seeing it. I, saw, I watched the trailer. I was like, oh, yes, this is that movie with Mary Steenburgen, and it is One Magic Christmas. And I will warn you, I believe this is a little bit of a serious movie. And you know how we handle serious movies around here. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it could be something. Or Why'd it could be completely awful. <laughs> I have never seen this one, so I have no idea. I mean, except yeah, for that behind. very detailed uh, description you gave. I, yeah, I, I, I guess I only watched it once, maybe. I, it might have been in the theaters. It, it came out at Thanksgiving. I looked up when it came out. Uh, which would have been a time that we would all would have gone as a family to go see a movie. Uh, so it, it may have, it may have very well been at the theaters, but um, I remember distinctly watching it. after seeing the trailer, especially it all kind of came back to me. The whole movie did. So is there a fire truck? I, I don't recall a fire truck being in it. I just remember there being like a Kmart in it. And, um, <laughs> I don't know if it was an actual Kmart, but it, it was, it had a Kmart vibe. <laughs> And, um, to see, yeah, the whole town, vibes. their whole town, they're in, is kind of like got a Shelby <laughs> thing going on. I'm all so. about the Kmart, the Kmart vibes. <laughs> is, is this a, an Elise McSwain uh, classic? I need to ask ask uh, Elise about that. Um, I bet she remembers it. Gosh, because she pulled out the. What were we watching? The oh yeah, the um, the Wisconsin fight song out of uh, <laughs> Robin Hood that came out of left field yeah, on me. Yeah. Um, so I, I'll, I'll run it, I'll run it up her flagpole and see what she says and see if she's uh, has any yeah, memory she's of it. Got so. some knowledge. Yeah, to get that, uh, that could be like the Leonard Malton uh, segment for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, is there a cult following for One Magic Christmas other than maybe Robert's mom? Let us know. I know several of our regular listeners like to chime in on almost every episode. Let us know what you think of the Christmas episode at our email address. Info at medfieldfilm.com or on social media at medfieldfilm. Hey, Andy. Uh, Andy? Mm. Boys. <laughs> These dumplings sure are good. Uh, yeah. Hey, Andy. Um. Dumplings. Uh, okay, I'm just uh, trying to do a Todd spot here. Ow. Pass that son of a gun, over. Okay, Andy. Uh, is anyone else here? Guys, Dumplings. Anyone? Dumplings. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Andy, what do you think of going in on a dumpling business together? Dumplings? Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. You, you got some capital? Sure, sure, I guess. You know, you know, foodie culture is taking off, and it's it's time to show folks what good dumplings are. Well, I'm all in, <clears throat> but we're going to need to have some real good branding to keep up with all these startups out there. Well, Andy, it's funny you should mention that, because I was just thinking about how we have a real ace in the hole in that department. <clears throat> uh, yeah, a real ace in the hole. You know, old Todd Naprick at Binding Graphic Solutions? Well, I bet he could draw a dumpling with a mouse and his eyes closed. I mean, heck, he makes all our graphics for the podcast now, doesn't he? That's right, Andy. Todd can do it for most anyone. As long as they aren't any no counts like that, Theodore and Amos. <laughs> Todd can make, those, uh, make almost anyone look good. Almost anyone look good. Oh, next line. Just head on over to bindinggraphics.com and bydandgraphics.com and tell Todd the boys at Medfield sent you. Yeah, the Medfield Dumpling Gang. <laughs> <laughs> so from all of us here at the Medfield College Film Society, to all of you, we wish you well. We'll see you next time for Christmas time. So long.
me a mighty red field. How my mother dear, all your sons and daughters hail to me. Redfield College of Technology, and while we hold your banner high, rock, 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 we shout your praises to the sky, rock, rock, for proud are we a mighty red.